Welcome to Bob Mills San Diego. Well, it's not really my San Diego, it's your San Diego. But I love this town. Anybody that lives here has got to love San Diego. We've got everything, the mountains, the desert, the ocean, the beaches, the climate, it's all right here. After all, where else in the world would you find them stopping traffic to let an airplane cross the street? And where would you find an old wooden pedestrian bridge this long just to let people walk over the freeway? It's all right here in San Diego, and so are a lot of other things. That's what this program is going to be all about. The people, the places, the things around San Diego, the well-known history and the little-known sidelights. And I'm dependent on you to help me, too, because I know you'll have ideas for stories. So give me a call. Let me know about them. We'll try to get them on Bob Mills San Diego. On this first program, we're going to walk down Lower Broadway with an evangelistic preacher from the South, the chaplain of Bourbon Street in New Orleans. Then we're going to travel down that long, lonesome highway in an old 1910 Packard. And we're going to visit that tower right out there. It's an oceanographic tower that's run for the Navy. But how many people are on it? How long has it been there? What's it for? What's it going to do? All these things we'll find out in just a moment on Bob Mills San Diego. Bourbon Street down in the French Quarter of Old New Orleans is supposed to be one of the wickedest streets in the world. Jazz started out on Bourbon Street, and along with jazz came killings and drinking and gambling and dope and prostitution and sex and perversion and just about every sin you could possibly think of. That's why I thought that was kind of a strange place for a minister to have his headquarters. But that's where the Reverend Bob Harrington goes. As he says, if you want to go fishing, you go where the fish are. His story is told in a book that was published by Doubleday back in 1969. It's called The Chaplain of Bourbon Street. Bob Harrington visited San Diego recently. I thought it would be interesting to take him down on our Bourbon Street, down on Lower Broadway. So one night, we went down there, walked up and down the streets, and just talked about life in general. Here are his comments. They have some wholesome films here at your local theater dark, naked realism. I wonder what the signs would have looked like in Sodom and Gomorrah if they'd had marquees out over the street. I wonder what Lot would have seen when he walked into Sodom and Gomorrah before the fire brimstone was sent down by God. Did they uh, have those when you were in San Diego in the Navy? Yeah, they had these same type all-night theaters, and I'm sure they were patronized by the sailors as other people, and I was one of those guys because I had no other place to go, didn't know another better way of life of living. It's amazing how God whipped us up like he did, made woman different, man different. I'm glad for the differences. One of the first things I'm going to ask him is why he whipped us up like he did, put all these gadgets on us, then said, don't use them. <laughs> There's nothing evil about sex. Sex is a great gift. It's a great gift that can use or abuse. It can be a guide to a marriage or a misguide to a marriage. The reason we don't have as many homes as we should is the man doesn't know how to be the sex leader in that marriage that he should. Do you have many men like this in your town of New Orleans? Yes, you, we surely do. Do you minister to the derelicts? Then? Yes, we, we certainly do. Everywhere we go, down in New Orleans and here in other cities, we have we have French Quarter down there. We have, have the rescue mission. Hi. Are you up in New Orleans? No, I'm San Diego strictly. San Diego, huh? 43 years. Uh-huh. Where, where do you live? Just here in the town? Or well... You raised here? Went to Navy no, here or something? No, I went to school here. I was raised over in Colville, Illinois. You ever, you ever give your heart to the Lord? You believe in the Lord? I believe in the Lord, yeah. Uh-huh. You walk down the streets of San Diego and you see these new buildings, but you got the same old problems. You look at these high-rise skyscrapers, but in there you got some low-living characters. 25 stories. Did you know there's as many problems in that 25 stories as there would be in the ghettos of San Diego? A lot of rich men, uh, the fellows that own that building, yeah. those that work in that building. See, is it really as hard for them to get into heaven as it is for a camel to go through the, the eye? eye? That's what the book says. I can't comprehend all the fullness of that. I think one of the reasons it's difficult for rich men to be converted is the fact that we who are converted are a little bit sheepish about witnessing to rich people. We all like to always like to think of the wino, the drunk, the derelict. 
the uh, has been but we ought to think of the potential of these men that are giants in your community it doesn't take the lord any more power to save a banker than he does a drunkard it doesn't take him any more power to convert those people in that 25-story skyscraper as it would the entire ghettos of san diego of course this is your country club drinking crowd this is a group that if they get too much they call alcoholics they're not called drunkards if they have too many drinks they call over social drinking they're not called winos and booze heads because that's the group down further here in the city. They're the ones that go out to the country club because they have padded bars. That way when you pass out, you don't pop your chin. There may be some multimillionaires in that building, but I guarantee they're going to be prayer warriors when they start dying. If we had one more earthquake here in California and that bank was in the middle of it, every one of those people would become missionaries before they reached the ground. Bob, have you ever been with men who were dying? Yes, I've been with many, and I've never met an atheist, an infidel, a cusser, a smoker, a drinker, a doubter when they're dying. Everybody I meet when they're dying, when they know they're checking out, they want to be sure they're checking in with the Lord. So I tell people that the Lord's good enough for you when you're dying, you ought to try him when you're living. He's not going to hurt you one bit. Is there excitement to living with the Lord? Yes, it's much excitement, much excitement. Very much, yes. He's talking to me now. What are you, well, Bourbon what are you guys? Street. I'm a chaplain. I'm a Baptist. Oh, we sell Bible. Yes. Well, I'm a Baptist evangelist from New Orleans. What do you girls do here? We sell Bible. Bible. You do? Well, do you folks know the author of the Bible? Du Bois. Du Bois you, know, you know the you know the Lord. That's the one I'm talking about. He's oh, the one well, in the book. He didn't write it. Uh, but he inspired man to do it. Yeah, didn't but he, huh? Du Bois Publishers is the author. Yeah, they're the one. No, they published oh, it. This is the book you're talking about right here. I have it with me. I keep it with me. I jot little notes and things down on the side. Well, we sell large family yeah, I know and you'd be huh? surprised the guys who do come in here and say Bible, wow, but once you talk to them, they yeah. think it's the best gift I Sure, can. sure they do. Where are you from? I'm from Scotland. Yeah, I thought I heard that. <laughs> One of the greatest revivals in the history of time was in Scotland. John Knox yeah. had a great revival, yeah, and many John Knox Presbyterian people yes, in Scotland. Yes, I'm one of them. Are you Presbyterian? <laughs> I'm Baptist, so it's good to see you. Good to see that you got the book. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, you got the answer there. Uh -huh. You know the author of the Bible, yes, Devore. Yeah. Yeah. Were they putting you on, or, 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 no. or did you pin them down? The answer is sincere and honest well, they with everything they were saying. They're selling the Bible. That's not all they're selling. You can rest yeah. assured of that. Yeah. But, uh, he said, do you know the author of that book? And I said, yes, it's Devore. <laughs> Devore Publishing Company. That's who we work for. Bless their heart. I tell you, that was a statement of the night. I was glad you could have written a facial expression on that. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I thought I'd known the author. I said, who is it? Devore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't quite get your take on that either. <laughs> Hi. How you doing? Oh, here's a doozy. Huh? Yeah, they this have a doozy for you. If nudity offends you, please don't come in. Okay. Um, now, your headquarters are right down in the heart of this district. Of New yeah. Orleans. In fact, they have mine. a lot of this. When you come into my office, you go by the Blue Angel nightclub to come into my door. You turn to my right prayer room, and the left is a stripper's dressing room. So this is where I locate. This is where I am. This is where I go to witness. The Bible said when you follow the Lord, you become fishers of men. So if you're going to fish, go where the fish are. And we're in a pretty good fish hole right now here in San Diego, too. When I first got saved and started witnessing to these prostitutes and street walkers and things, it used to bug me when they'd laugh at me and ridicule my Lord. Then I got to thinking, if they don't do that, then they immediately have got to admit that they are wrong and they are living in sin. So these that laugh at me sometimes, later I get calls from them and say, Preacher, I'm sorry, I sure would like to talk seriously with you. And we're always available and ready to talk. Have you ever had any converts uh, from the show people down yes, in Street, yes, the strippers? Yes, yes, we have one working in our office right now. When we gave her her first paycheck, she said that's the first money she ever made without laying on a bank. And she's doing a tremendous job of secretary work with her. We sent her to a business school. We trained her because we not only try to get people saved, we try to locate them in places of service and opportunities. After that, new life begins. You do an injustice to someone to just point them to the Lord and drop them and leave them and ignore them. And we've led many strippers to the Lord who later go into a beauty school or go into a PBX operation. We try to place them. I have a board of friends that help me find places for these bartenders. You know, a guy who's a bartender wonders, what can I do after I get right with the Lord? So we help supply what he can do. Yesterday when I was discussing with you whether there's any prophecy that you see in the Bible foretelling the end of times and it yes. uh, looks like it's near. Yes. 
Expand on that a little bit. Well, we're walking uh, right in the middle of it. Everywhere you go, when the times will wax worse and conditions will get like they are today, and the Bible says as the days that were before the flood, they were a situation similar to what we're living in today, the days of Sodom. In fact, I make this statement about this area of San Diego, California. If God's judgment doesn't destroy this type of life, then he owes Sodom and Gomorrah an apology. Because where we walk tonight would have been identical or even a worse condition than where uh, Lot himself walked in the streets of Sodom and Gomorrah. So the rest... Last year, there were a half a million vehicles registered in the county of San Diego. Rations. We headed for San Diego's back country. It was a sunny day and the hills were beginning to green up following the disastrous fires last fall. So, if you're a car buff, or if you like the scenery, let's go down that long lonesome highway. Hanging around Going down that line 